Who here knows of the fork trick in chess? I'm Grandmaster Max Illingworth, and today I'll be showing you all about the fork trick and uh, how to deal with it, and how to avoid it, uh, and how to play it, all that sort of thing. So, I'll show you uh, how we can get to the fork trick in chess. Uh, so it happens within the open games with e4, e5, which you see most often at the beginner level and at the grandmaster level. Uh, so in this game, after knight f3, knight c6, and knight c3, chances are you've probably faced bishop c5 quite a bit if you're relatively new to chess. And yet after bishop c5 we actually have a, a pretty decent move we can play in this position. And I'd like to give you the opportunity to pause the video and see if you can find this move for yourself. Uh, so what would you play here as white? Well, a lot of people will play moves such as bishop to c4, and after knight f6, d3, and now d6, we'd get this symmetrical position that you see quite a lot actually at the uh, starting out level. But we actually have a better move than just developing our bishop. When they have their bishop like this, we can actually play knight takes e5 which is known as the fork trick. And the way it works is that after knight takes e5, we can fork their pieces. How exactly? That's right, with d4. And then when they move one of their pieces to safety, we take the other one. And this position, I think, is one where white can claim an edge. Um, I guess you can see from the, uh, the arrows here that white does have this advantage in space. And that bishop on e5 can get kicked away by our pieces. In the game, White actually played bishop to d3. And, uh, well, to see how the game proceeded, uh, we had 97. Castles, castles. And now we have a very nice way to attack their position. We can play f4. And after bishop takes c3, we can say that White has the better position. Uh, why do you think that's the case? Well, the reason white's better is because we have the bishop pair advantage and we have a strong center, which is much more important, I think. The fact they have these double pawns, which can't even really be attacked all that easily by black. Now, for the full game, you can go to my Patreon site, uh, which I assume is where you've seen this video from, and download my notes there. But for the rest of this video, I actually want to show what can happen against a couple of other tricky options, which... Maybe are not particularly good, but they have uh, claimed a lot of victims at the uh, junior or scholastic level. So what if black plays a little intermezzo or desperado move, bishop takes f2. So after king f2 and knight e5. Well now if we play d4 then at least it's not a fork. Well would you play d4 anyway in this position? I hope your answer was yes, because actually d4 is the best move here getting our dream center, and kicking their knight around a bit. You know, if they have to move that knight back, then we can even do a little trick of castling by hand. It's always nice when they play the arrows for us, but yeah, we can do a little artificial castling with the king uh, to make sure that our king will be nice and safe while we still keep our center and our bishop pair advantage. So the trickier move that often trips up people in practice is a move queen f6. But after king g1, well, let's set a little puzzle. What would you do about knight g4 with the little threat of queen takes f2, mate? Uh, feel free to pause the video because you really have to find the best move here to uh, do well as white. So hopefully you found the move queen d2. Uh, well done if, if you saw this way of covering both f2 and d4. And yeah, we can kick their piece away of h3 and knight d5. And that's really not nice for black at all. Uh, if you play queen g4, of course, you do run into this problem that you are going to get mated. And this is what we have to be careful of uh, when we play this as white. Uh, now, there's one other trick they can play, which it's a little bit cheap, but it's good to know it. Uh, that if black does play knight e7, uh, just please don't take on, uh, on e5 here. Because if you do, they... Well, they just put queen b6 and yeah, something we're getting mated here. So 
the way to avoid that is just to play bishop e3. That makes sure that we really are threatening to take this knight. I find in general the bishop's very good on e3, actually, uh, when you have moved your f-pawn. It just helps cover those weaknesses on the g1 to a7 diagonal. So if the knight has to move back, then our know, life is pretty good. And we may even play knight b5, just to threaten an annoying fork on c7. Now, it turns out you can actually do this trick with black as well. Uh, let me show you how it works. So after knight f6, well, okay, what do you think might be a decent move for white in this position? Uh, if they're basing it on sort of what beginners usually play, most of them put their bishop on c4, because that's sort of what they, are, uh, they learn to do uh, at first. But bishop c4 actually allows a, a pretty good move for black. So what do you think might be a better move for black than just copying with bishop c5 in this position? So well done if if you found the move knight takes c4, the same fork trick as before. The point is kind of similar if knight e4. We can play d5, again forking the bishop and the knight as such. If they play bishop d3... Then we can take and turn as lot can be said about this position, but essentially Black's got a very comfortable game because of his uh, his extra space in the centre, and we're actually very happy if they were to take on c6 as a Reynos game between our Kosh against Adams, uh, where Adams showed that his bishop pair were a lot better than a lot more important, let's say, than the fact he has doubled pawns. Um, whereas if White castles instead. Well, you can castle, and now I think a good plan for black is to uh, try and push f5 and try and get his center moving. But first we might play bishop g4 and only then go f5 and uh, bring all our pieces into the attack on the white king. Uh, so I think that's a very promising line for black. Uh, also, there is one other tricky line that they can try, where if they play bishop b5, it makes sense it will take... And unlike the other line we saw, White is trying to uh, make something happen with this pin. So what do you think would be a good defense for Black against this early attack on White's part? Feel free and to pause the video if you need some time to think about it. So it turns out actually I think Queen G5 is a very best move uh, using the pin here to good effect. So if they play Knight C6 you can. Play queen takes b5 and you win the bishop pair and the knight sort of gets chased all over the place. Uh, you go back to g5 and remind why this g2 pawn is not so safe. Just as a quick puzzle, if white were to castle, what do you think would be a good move for black here? Uh, well done if you spotted the move bishop h3. In that way we can hit the g2 pawn and yeah, if g3 we can just win an exchange and you know, life is good at, at this point. Jerry having an extra exchange will be enough for us to win the game, as it were. Uh, if you wanted to play queen d5, actually, that would also give you a better position. Uh, actually, probably a much better position. So you even have two good ways to deal with the threat. But it's worth knowing that times you can actually ignore the opponent's threat in chess, if our threats are even stronger. Um, so I could just mention one other line, just for completeness sake. That if they do castle here, they can try to get this sort of lead in development uh, and try to pressure our position. But that's not something I'd be too bothered by. I think I had a game with this in 2013 where I just played Queen e7, just defending our weak points in advance. And there wasn't much white could really do against my plan just playing d6 and sort of keeping everything nice and solid. If they do play knight g5, you've got knight d8 and... Well, I can try to attack, but I really don't uh, don't see it being a problem. Just go f6 and you know, if knight to f3, then even c6 and d5 already looks uh, like a very solid position for black, where it will be rather hard for uh, for white to actually undermine our centre properly. So I think this is just an extra pawn for black. So yeah, that's this game here. Um, and showing the different possibilities with the fork trick. Uh, so I may well return to in a later video, but in the meantime, yeah, check out my Patreon site, uh, download the full game for, uh, for more details on this, and yeah, I hope you enjoyed the video, 
and I'll see you in the next one soon. Bye-bye.